Yo, for the last three months, I've been using the 14 inch M4 Max MacBook Pro as my main development machine. And today I'm breaking down my experience and letting you guys know the truth. By the end of this video, you'll know whether you should or shouldn't buy this laptop. Now, I look at the purchase of this machine as an investment. I'm buying a tool to improve my workflow. Whether that means I'm literally working faster, things feel smoother, or it's just a more enjoyable experience. So with that said, this is the Bind model that has 36 gigabytes of RAM, a one terabit SSD, and a 32 core GPU. I upgraded from the M3 Pro, which to be honest, no one should be making that year to year upgrade. But full transparency, I make back the money I spend on the laptops, and I just find it a lot of fun to talk about. That said, the spec I bought last year was probably a little weaker than I needed. It was the very base model with 18 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. Whenever I'm coding or editing one of these videos, I have a ridiculous amount of windows open, which is really my fault, but with 18 gigabytes of RAM, I ran into constant freezes and overall the laptop just felt sluggish. The M4 Max is still a very powerful chip, but I'll be honest, most of my day-to-day -day workflow improvements have just been from the increased RAM. Now, on the storage side, I've found that 1TB is the sweet spot for me. 512 is just way too low, but here it's enough that I'm not constantly running out of storage, and I don't have to shell out a ton of money to Apple. I use an external SSD, and honestly can't recommend getting one enough if you work with a lot of video files, or anything else that takes up a lot of space. These days, you can pick up an M.2 SSD and throw it into an enclosure for not too much money, and have access to really fast storage on the go, or in your workspace. For me, this is perfect, because because I can keep my web dev projects on my Mac as those don't take up too much storage, but for all of my video files and Unreal projects that do take up a lot of space, I can keep those on the SSD. So I went with the 14 inch model, which I kind of forgot was a little controversial. We'll talk about thermals in a minute here, but for my workflow, I really enjoy this screen size. These days, I'd say I spend around 80% of my time working on the Mac, sitting here at my desk with this 38 inch ultra wide, so the smaller screen real estate is rarely an issue. Honestly, for the times I do work away from my desk, I really enjoy this being such a compact device. There are those times that coding on the couch with this is really nice. For quick coding sessions, I love the portability of this size, but as I work more and more just off the display, I will admit things can start to feel cramped. Trying to fit your code editor, a browser, the terminal all on the same screen just doesn't really work. So what I've gotten better at is just working full screen in a single app at a time, and then using keyboard shortcuts to go between each one. If I was constantly moving my finger across the trackpad to open every app, I'd probably go insane. But luckily Raycast exists, which is a fantastic spotlight replacement that I I highly recommend you check out, but it allows you to set keyboard shortcuts to open any app or perform a variety of different functions, and it's really nice. This lets me fly through apps and not have to worry about the screen real estate that I have. For me, being able to chuck this laptop into a bag and then easily take it out without using too much space is just too convenient. Now, today's sponsor Lifen sent me their Wave toothbrush, and it's what I'd expect if Apple made a toothbrush. The unboxing experience has the same attention to detail and satisfying feel as an iPhone, revealing a sleek aluminum toothbrush that feels premium in the hand. The Wave is actually the world's first electric toothbrush capable of both 60 degree oscillation and vibration. This results in a brush head movement that aligns perfectly with dentist recommended bass brushing techniques. It's been a few months since I originally started using a Life & Wave and I can tell you the engineering is next level. For me, I definitely notice how their servo system, which was previously only seen in robotics, controls very well. The level of accuracy, 0.1 degrees in oscillations, gives me a clean every day that I've never felt before. The servo system generates 6.1 watts of power output compared to just 2 watts in traditional sonic motors, maintaining a consistent brushing power even when encountering resistance. The stronger power is gentle on your gums thanks to the 0.02mm soft tapered bristles with a 90% tapering rate. In real world use, that translates to 6 times better plaque removal compared to a regular toothbrush. I love this integration with Lifen's app, which lets you adjust 3 settings, vibration strength, oscillation range, and oscillation speed, each with 10 different levels. You can also set brushing timers and enable 30 second zone 
change reminders. Before traveling, just long press the button to activate travel mode, which prevents accidental activation. If you're interested in checking out the Wave toothbrush, I'll have a link in the description. And with Valentine's Day coming up, they're running a special sale up to 25% off. Perfect timing to get one of these for someone special. Now, I want to talk about the day-to-day -day performance that you can expect out of the M4 Max. I'm not going to spend much time looking at charts or reading Geekbench scores because I don't think they mean much and they're kind of boring, but really briefly looking at the chart from my initial review, just because I think it gives some context. In general, you could expect a 67%, 90%, and 24% increase in single core, multi-core, and metal GPU scores from the M1 Max. The reason I'm comparing it to the M1 Max as opposed to any recent Mac is because I don't think anybody on the M3 or M2 should really be looking at this to upgrade. All of the Apple Silicon Macs are really impressive, but the M1 Max is just old enough now that there's been enough time for those year-over-year -year upgrades to compound, that comparing the M1 to the M4, there is more of a noticeable upgrade. Now, that said, from my experience coming not from the M3 Max, but the M3 Pro, I have noticed a not insignificant performance bump, again, largely from the RAM upgrade, but there's no doubt that this chip is a beast. A new program I've added to my workflow is Unreal Engine, and I'm not just playing around with sample projects, I've actually been building the demo for my first game, so that project is very slowly gaining complexity, which lets me give you guys a more valuable perspective of how this machine runs. Now I will say that I do most of my work on my PC rig, mainly because it has a much better GPU, and the engine is just more optimized on Windows. That said though, there have been times like when I went home for the holidays or just felt like working on my laptop, that it was very convenient to be able to make progress on the game while working on the Mac. Honestly, I was pretty surprised at how well the engine performs. There's of course the occasional bugs and there's plenty of texture issues that you run into, but the vast majority of the time, the Mac has no problem moving around the editor and playing the preview. You basically have to be plugged in though because this just destroys your battery, and that's going to be a theme you see with the M4 Max, especially at this form factor, which we'll touch on in a minute. The times that I've worked in Unreal away from the desk, I get no more than two, maybe three hours just because of how intensive Unreal is. At the same time, the Mac gets really hot, and it's one of the few times that I ever hear the fans. I will say though that the Mac at its worst isn't even close to a lot of Windows laptops. This is of course just my experience, but with the Dell XPS, that laptop got a lot hotter and a lot louder when working in very similar sized Unreal projects. Now, the next use case, and probably my number one these days, is web development, and on its own, that's a very lightweight use case, but when I'm working on a project, it's common that I have open several apps and a ton of tabs within Zen. I write my front ends in Cursor with Next.js, my back ends in Go using Goland, along with my terminal, sometimes an API client, and then of course the browser. On my M3 Pro with just 18 gigabytes of RAM, I'd be having noticeable slowdown with all those apps open, but the Max here has handled it without a problem. Now, as I mentioned, the battery life is going to be worse on this machine compared to the M4 Pro or the 16 inch model, and that's simply because you have a more power drawing chip in a smaller chassis. Because of that, I've heard some people say you should never get the 14 inch model, and I don't completely agree with that. There is the downside of thermals and battery life, but for those times that I'm working in Unreal or just have a ton of applications running at the same time, I'm glad I have that extra power. This is especially the case because, like I said, I'm almost always docked. I think this better GPU is something to consider depending on what apps you spend your time in. I think that the bottom line for me is if I spent less time working at my desk, the 16 inch would become a pretty big consideration because you have better thermal performance, battery life, and while a trade off, much more screen real estate that can be very valuable, especially when doing things like coding. I want to hear your thoughts down below, but after three months of using this 14 inch M4 Max as my daily programming machine, I've been very happy. It's handled web development without a problem, and when I edit these videos or work on an Unreal Engine game, that extra power really makes a difference. If you enjoyed this video, you'll want to watch this one next, where I talk about how I set up my Mac for development to stay productive. Thanks for watching, and take care.